Greetings. This is an ultrasonic insect killer, which I've received from Amazon. It's part of their Vine program, so I didn't actually pay for this. If you look it up on Amazon, it's got a lot of very favorable reviews. But when you go through those reviews, you see that the older ones are actually for a filter for a Breville espresso machine. So they've completely rewritten the listing to make use of any positive reviews that they've already had for peddling this thing. So in the box, it is a plug-in device, as you can see. And straight away, see, this is going to get a one-star review from me because of the construction of the of the plug um, for those of you not in the UK this is what a normal mains plug will look like for the UK with the shrouded pins not a shrouded earth pin and the earth pin is bigger than the rest you can see where these although the earth pin is longer than the rest it's actually not the correct thickness and the pins are also all angled. They're supposed to be all straight. So straight away, that's getting a one star review from me. Let's plug it in and it's got three indicators here. There's just about to see those. If I knock the big light off. You can see them glowing there, it's glowing up the sides and it's got these two indicators there and there's one in the middle which looks like it does nothing. And the power consumption is drawing 0.8 watts according to that, or 0. Yeah, 0 0.8 watts, it looks like 0 0.6 on the screen there, but it's actually a bit of crud on this on there. And the Current consumption is what's that, 15 milliamps. So obviously the power factor is incredibly low on this. Uh, I can't hear anything from this. I don't know if the microphones are picking up anything from this. I might have to re-record all the audio now, I don't know. But anyway, let's take that and crack it open. There are no Oh, there might be a screw in there. Let's have a look. See, does it actually screw open? Yes, it does. It's got a small Phillips screwdriver in there. And there we go. So there is some circuitry in here. Uh, there's no connection to the earth pin, which I didn't really think it would need one, uh, but it is still the wrong size. It's the wrong construction for the UK. And we do actually have a transducer. And they've used one screw to mount the circuit. using it. Ah, there's a button. I didn't even notice there was a button. What's that button for then? It's saying the instructions. Is it an on-off button? Plug it in to start to work. Doesn't say anything about the button. Right, there's no actual way of pressing that button because it didn't line up with this. In fact, that stops the, um, that just hold, helps hold the board in place and actually stops it from being, being pressed. There's no way of squashing the board enough to actually trigger the button. So, waste of space button, interesting. Let's take it apart and 
let's see um, what's inside. Well, we can see what's inside. Let's uh, let's trace this out. Here's a nice close up of the board, and you can see that this is actually designed to take either the surface mount version of that chip or a through hole version. And here's the schematic, which was pretty easy to work out. It didn't take me too long. As you can see over on the left, there's a capacitive dropper with a discharge resistor across it. There's also a 100 ohm resistor in series with the neutral line. So there's additional current limiting there. And then that just feeds into a bridge rectifier. That's then got two capacitors, one electrolytic, one little surface mount ceramic, and a Zener diode, which is limiting the voltage to probably around about the 5 volt mark. We'll find out soon. That's then feeding a chip which, given its pin out, it looks to me like it could well be a pick. Picks certainly have the uh, the voltage and ground connections that way around on pins 1 and 8. And that's just got one connection which is doing the LED, one connection doing the oscillator circuit with the, with the piezo buzzer, and whatever that switch is for. As you can see from this, there's not a lot to the, the low voltage side, so I should be able to just power this up just off a bench power supply. If I ignore the AC input and just put a supply straight on the output of that bridge rectifier, you should get it going and be able to measure what that uh, what that buzzer is doing. Let's have a go. Right, now off camera I did manage to get this to illuminate and then I took the power supply up a little bit too high and it decided to just go out. So something's been smoked out on this now. Um, possibly the pig, possibly the um, Zena, I don't know, but it's not uh, it's not a happy bunny now. I'll try breaking off that uh, that Zena because it's not actually needed anymore. In fact, let's try powering it off. Back on and just see if yeah the current. Draw rises quite sharply. Up to about 2.3 volts and it's it's not doing anything anymore. So um the chip is quite hot. I think I've fried it. Oh well. I can test that by just breaking off the uh Zener. Let's see if it'll wake up at all now. Um, let's take the current right down. Oh, there we go. Ah, right. Okay. He sees that back off again because he's got no Zener now. So uh, the Zener is fried, but the the rest of it is actually functional now. Let me just turn that back off and we'll see see what sort of signal we get. Frequency. 27 kilohertz. Let's stop this sliding around. There we go. Right, so we've got a 27 kilohertz signal from there. So that explains why I couldn't hear it, but uh, what's the box say? Well, the instructions say it'll do 22 to 65 kilohertz. So that's what it does. And you, don't forget, you've not got this button to play with at all. So what happens if you do press it? Turns it off. Well, I think that's a bit of a self-destruct button, really. Or at least it is within, when you haven't got the rest of the, the, um, the stuff in there. Whatever that button does, it causes the... Um, the current draw to skyrocket and obviously uh, nuke the chip. That's clever. But you can see it would have done something. It was actually acting as a, as an emitter and would it have killed mozzie things? I don't think so. You know, it might annoy them. It might you know make them bugger off, but it's not going to kill them, is it? Surely. But what was more concerning is the fact that it's got a, a non-UK compliant connection. So uh, it's getting a one-star review anyway, as I said earlier. But that's what's inside. 
I would say that's how you make one, but you'd need the code for the shirt, wouldn't you? But uh, yeah, so uh, that's what's inside. Not very much, but it is actually a functional device, albeit uh, not a very well designed one. Oh, and all those LEDs on the front, it's just that one. Thanks very much for watching.